Welcome again, and welcome to Sven Schatter from Lively Apps, who is a repeat customer. So it's the second time in our webinar. Thank you for that. But this time he is back not as the uh, as an award winner for best uh, marketplace developer contributor, but as a code geist winner uh, with an app um, called Lively Recorder, uh, one macro to rule them all, which won a prize at last year's Atlassian Hackathon, which is called Codegeist. So with that, and without further ado, over to you, Sven. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome back. And uh, have fun. And I will just disappear and see you on the other side. Yes, thank, thank you, Jörg. Uh, just let me go ahead and start my presentation. There we go. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Lively Recorder, one one macro to record them all. Actually, you said rule them all. That would also be cool, but uh, we're, we're doing slightly something slightly different here, actually. <laughs> okay. Uh, hi, I'm Sven, a developer at Lively Apps, and uh, we are, are a small team split across Germany and Vancouver, and we really like Confluence. Uh, in fact, we like it so much, we have made a lot of apps for it. And you might know us from apps like Task Reminder and Pocket Query or Hide Elements or apps like that. And uh, yeah, 2020 has been going pretty well so far for us. Uh, we have released uh, two cloud versions uh, for Task Reminder and for Pocket Query. And we've also won a Partner of the Year award, right? Uh, but that's not what we want to talk about today here. We want to talk about our submission to Codegeist, which is the live recorder, which we also won second place with. So uh, 2020 was actually going pretty well for us so far, uh, or it's actually over now. But in case you don't remember, Codegeist uh, was a hackathon by Atlassian that happened from May to July last year. And the idea was that some developers would come together and create new apps for Atlassian products like Chira and Confluence. And there was actually a pretty hefty price pool involved, as you can see here. Uh, so yeah, we were, of course, motivated to participate in that. And I think we, we had quite a cool idea. Uh, it, was the, it was the lively recorder for Confluence. And we probably weren't the only ones who thought that was a cool idea, because as you know by now, probably, we won the second place with it. So what can it do? Um, essentially, we wanted to have a single easy way to create recordings of any kind directly from within Confluence, right? So the way the recorder works is if you go to a Confluence page and you start typing slash recording or slash video or slash screen for that matter, the recording macro would show up. And when you inserted that into the page, you would see a dialog that asks you what you want to record. So here you can choose either audio, video, or screen. And let's say you chose video because you wanted to record your webcam. Uh, it would go like you would expect. You can choose your camera devices or microphone devices, uh, do the recording, and when you're done, give it a name and possibly a description and upload it into the page. So when you did that, it looked like this. Uh, so this is, this is our, these are all screenshots from our listing. And uh, here you can see uh, when you have made a recording, it's in the page, you can share it with your teammates. Um, pretty cool, right? So if you, if you ever wanted to record something like a quick tutorial for your colleagues, that's probably the fastest way to do it. And also pretty easy for non-technical uh, users, right? So that's, that's the whole idea behind it. And one interesting thing we did with this app, which probably also helped us win the second place is we implemented a cool feature called data locality, or also sometimes referred to as data residency now within the Atlassian ecosystem. And being a German myself, I know that oftentimes a problem going into the cloud is that you want to know where your data is stored, right? So as a German, I would probably like my data to be stored in Germany as well. And this is exactly what we had built here. You could simply say after you had stored in the recorder, please store all of my recordings in Frankfurt, for example. Yeah, so uh, pretty cool feature, but unfortunately it actually kind of broke our necks um, because as cool as uh, AWS S3 is, it's also kind of expensive. Um, when, we, when we looked at the pricing, we realized 
that storing videos there would cost about two cents per gigabyte per month. So wait, that's that's not a lot, right? If you if you create one terabyte of video, that would only be $23 per month, right? So that doesn't sound like a lot. Yeah, because the actual problem is not the storage itself, but every time you download the video, so that also means every time you watch the video, you would also have to pay something. And that is actually considerably more expensive. As you can see here, this costs nine cents per gigabyte per month, which uh, adds up really quickly if you have a lot of people watching your video, which is probably what you want if you record a video in the first place, right? And then there would also be this, um, yeah, legal complexity around us storing the videos, right? Um, if, if you use the recorder within your company to record something, uh, you, there's a high chance you would talk about highly confidential stuff, right? And company secrets and so on. Um, if we were to host that and would have to take care of all the permissions and so on, this would introduce a lot of legal complexity. So yeah, it, it looked really bad. Um, it, as cool as the first solution was that, that we had in CodeGeist, uh, yeah, this, this didn't really seem like it would work. Um, but luckily, back in October last year, someone new joined our team, a girl from the Czech Republic with the name of Marketa. And when, when she looked at the recorder, we, we were really desperate at that point, she actually found a great solution to the problem. And yeah, we're, we're just gonna, I'm not gonna spoil what she did. Uh, we're just gonna look at what the recorder looks like today because it's actually available on the marketplace right now. It was released a couple of weeks ago. And let's just start on the same page again that we were before. So here you can see me inserting the recording macro again. And this is what the macro editor looks like right now. So here you can choose what you want to record, either video or screen. And when you have chosen, uh, for example, video, a pop-up opens, as we said, and you can now choose your devices. So looks all good here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start the recording. And yeah, now I'll just do my thing. <laughs> so here I'm just waving, but uh, you could do whatever you want. Tell your team what you did today, make a personal diary, stuff like that. And I'm also going to make a small description from a video before I upload and insert it into the page. So this, of course, takes a few seconds. But when it's done, the video gets inserted into the page. And you have a player just like you would expect. And now you can share the page with your colleagues, have them watch the video, and so on. OK, so let's just to be complete here, let's have a look at uh, what the same thing looks like if you record um, a screen cast with the recorder. So back on the same page. I could either go and edit the existing video file, but uh, that's not really what I want to do. Um, I, I actually want to make a new recording. So I'll go ahead again and insert another recording macro. And here you can see I can either insert the existing one or start a new one. So let's start a new screen recording. And here I can choose what to record. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead with my second screen. and. I don't really have anything cool to show you. I can check my options again. But uh, what I have is a picture of a cat. So that's <laughs> that's my recording. In reality, you would, of course, want to show how a certain system in your, um, in your company works or something like that. Make a quick tutorial, right? But uh, this will do for now. So same thing. When I upload it, it gets inserted into the page, and I can watch the video, right? Super easy, super simple. And I think this, this is by far the easiest way to create screencasts within Confluence, right? I, I don't think there's an easier or quicker way. OK, but where did the videos go now? Um, so are we still using S3? What, what's up? So it, there didn't seem to really be any difference to what we saw before, right? Um, yeah, I'm going to show you. If we go back to the page and click on these three dots, you will see that there's actually two page attachments. So here you can see the videos are now stored as attachments on the page. And even though this seems like a simple solution, this is so great. Uh, if we could have figured out this in the first place, uh, we would have immediately gone with it. But uh, during the hackathon, we didn't have a lot of time. And going with S3 was just a lot easier, uh, both because of 
uh, the technical details on how to implement it, but also because of this data locality feature, which we thought was really cool, right? So are we missing that now with this approach? Uh, let's, let's have a quick look. So let's compare the differences between the CodeGuest version and the one that's on the marketplace right now and that you can use today. So do we still have data locality or data residency? We of course had that with the S3 version, but do we have it now when we are storing the data's attachments? Well, yes, kind of. Um, Atlassian is actually implementing data locality for um, Jira and Confluence soon. So if, if you wanna get exact dates on that, you should Google Atlassian Cloud Roadmap and you will find a list of features that they are going to implement for the Atlassian Cloud. And data residency is one of them. So as soon as that happens, your attachments will of course receive the same data residency that the data uh, in your Confluence itself has, right? So that's really not going away at all. Actually, it's probably becoming better than what we could have done. Uh, do we still have the same legal complexity? Back with the S3 version, we, we had this whole thing that we were not only data processes, but we somehow were the owners of the video. And this wasn't really such a nice solution, uh, but now not anymore. Uh, it's all stored within Confluence. So not a single byte of your videos actually crosses our service now. And it's really just a contract between you and Atlassian again, right? Uh, the price, so as we talked, about before with the old solution, it would have been kind of expensive. Um, it was really hard to find a good price there. So we're super happy that we don't have to pay anything for storage now, which means we can give the recorder for you for super cheap. If you go to the marketplace today, it's actually only five cents per user. So there's there's really nothing keeping you back from trying it out. We would be super happy if you, if you gave it a shot and tell, uh, told us some feedback that you have if you tried it out. And yeah, as, as you probably have noticed in the old version, there were audio, video, and screen recordings. And in the new version, we can only make video and screen recordings right now. This is simply because the audio stuff, it was not so stable. So we removed it in the first version. But this brings me over on what we are going to do with, uh, with the recorder in the future, right? Um, <laughs> of course, we are probably going to uh, add back audio pretty fast. And after that, we have some uh, more cool feature ideas. So we think that there is a lot of potential for something like maybe a recording overview, which would make it a lot of uh, a lot simpler to administer Confluence in the sense that you could easily see how much recordings, uh, how much space are taking up recordings, uh, how many do I have in a space, and so on. So we think there's a lot of stuff that could be done there. And we think there are a lot of features that we could add to the video player, because if you have ever used the standard um, attachment player before, you might know it's, it's quite simple. So we think it could be pretty cool to show the amount of use on a video, uh, have a quality selection. Uh, we wanna give you more controls. Like if, if, if you have ever used a standard editor before, you might know you can only resize it to three different sizes. And we actually would like to give you more control, right? You could, uh, if, if we, we want to implement something where you could maybe even type in the amount of pixels, it should be wide and high and stuff like that. Also the style, what it is, uh, what is it supposed to look like and so on. And thumbnails are also a feature idea that we have in mind that you could upload your own thumbnail or just create one out of the existing video and so on. Subtitles, there's basically we're just copying YouTube at that point, right? But there's really so much we think we can do with the player. And once the player becomes really good, um, you might wanna start using that for, for standard videos as well that you might not even have uh, recorded with the recorder itself. So. We think that we want to go that route. And then lastly, of course, uh, we think it could be really cool to have a small editor in there, right? Uh, one of the most common use cases is probably that you want to chop off the last two or three seconds where you end the recording. Um, but we can probably go as sophisticated as we want there. Um, so that's also something we have been looking at. So we have a lot of ideas for the recorder and this, this is really the end of the talk now. I, I would be super happy if you gave it a shot, tried it out. And uh, if you have any feedback or questions right now, uh, I'd be happy to hear them. So I think there are actually some questions, right? There are three questions in the Q&A. And let me just read out the first one while I promote everybody to the panel. 
thanking you for the presentation first. Um, how much do the confluence attachments limit the capabilities? I assume that, that it drastically reduces the length of videos. So that was one of my questions as well. Mm -hmm. Does it check actually the, the limit of the attachments? So, so right now we have ourselves put a limit on 15 minutes onto the recorder. Um, technically, I don't think there would need to be a limit. So you can put in a size limit for an attachment itself as a Confluence administrator. But um, in itself, there's there's no limit other than the uh, 200 gigabytes of, of storage plan that you have for standard Confluence, right? But here, here's the amazing uh, thing, really. If you, if you have a Confluence Premium, you get unlimited attachment space. So huh. if you're a premium customer, this, this is pretty amazing for you. <laughs> OK. Do you plan uh, just on that on that matter? Do you plan other uh, integrations, let's say with uh, Vimeo or whatever, because they mm -hmm. have um, company plans where you can keep your not like YouTube where you don't have advertising or something? Yeah, we've we've been discussing that internally. So right now we we haven't really looked at something like that, but it is for sure something that we could implement. So. Also something like S3, there's technically not a problem with a customer providing their own S3 bucket or something like Vimeo, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not something we have looked at in detail, but it should be pretty easy to implement. And if there's, um, um, if people want it, uh, we will probably do it. <laughs> and Amazon has their own media services, so transcoding and stuff like that becomes exactly, really yeah. easy. So second question from our Q&A box. In terms of video lifecycle, do you have some overview of the videos with the amount of how much they get viewed and when was the last time somebody viewed it? That's basically the counter that you have in mind. Uh, exactly, yes. Yeah. This, this is something we would really like to implement, so we think that would be pretty cool, yeah. Uh, we don't have it right now, but... We hear you, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, do you plan to have transcript options so that Confluence can make it searchable via the index? Oh, yeah, yeah this, this is something, I didn't mention it on the slide, but this is also something we, we talked about internally. Um, that's also such a cool feature idea. So you can really see it's only at the start, right? It's going to get a lot better over, over the next few months probably. And this, this is also a pretty cool feature. So what we really got to do is we, we got to prioritize them because there's just so much cool stuff that, and we oh. don't know right now which one we are going to do first. <laughs> and at some point you are really copying YouTube then. Oh. Yes, <laughs> but, but it would be really cool, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but but again, I guess um, at some point, 200 gigabytes is not, not, too, not, too much, not a lot if you store videos. So that it sounds like a lot, but um, yeah. it actually isn't. So, um, and uh, yeah, that could be an issue. For for standard customers, there's prob there is a definitely, there's a demand for another solution, yeah. yes. So I have to look past my camera to see that in the chat. Is that a question? Apart from video, do we have speech to text conversion in Confluence? <laughs> Oi. I didn't put, I, I was thinking if I should put that on the slide, but uh, that's, that was also something we talked about. Yes, so that is actually pretty easy to do. We I think we already have a proof of concept working for ah, that, cool. if I'm not mistaken. Because there's there's an Amazon service that does that or some, something like that, isn't there? Is yeah, there, I think there's it? even just, I think your browser can just do it. Mm, I think okay. there's a browser API for that, yeah. Okay, so, but it, then it's basically language dependent, works very well for English, not so well for Bavarian dialect or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bavarian might be a tough one, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but so. I'm not sure if Amazon could do that either. Is there an API for oh, Bavarian? Oh, they probably can do everything. So, um, <laughs> but but I guess they will implement Chinese, Mandarin Chinese before they implement Bavarian Probably. <laughs> so that's it. more speakers, basically. Um, no, but that, that sounds like a, like a really cool app. Not yeah, like thank you. one to rule them all, but one to record them all. Um, <laughs> have you thought about other recordings? Because I remember now, I, I, I was researching the last couple of days how to uh, how to re record terminal sessions, which is a bit different, like than screen recordings. So mm -hmm. we can, and there's there's some there there are some tools that can uh, record the ASCII from a screen recording, from a from a terminal session. Any ideas in that direction? 
Ah, so you mean, okay. I'm not sure. I think we might be kind of limited there. I'm not sure if we can do that from within a browser. Okay. Um, so no, we, we actually haven't thought about that's 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 a really cool idea, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if it's possible actually. There are, there are plugins for that. There is, uh, I think it's called ASCII Cinema or, or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and that basically does terminal recordings from a fake terminal, basically. So it creates a, a bash output that gets recorded to a standard out or whatever. I don't uh, know. Yeah, but I, I see the use cases for that, right? That would be pretty cool for server administrators and so yeah. on. Yeah. And server sure. administrators and every all kinds of scripting and mm -hmm. mob programming sessions that you have or stuff like that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, there is another question. Do you plan other deployment options, server or data center? Ha -ha. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do we invest in a dying technology <laughs> no. yeah i mean that's a, that's a tough question right so we we definitely hear some demand there we we already yeah. had some people asking us that as well right now we we don't know yet so if there's gonna be one it's it's most likely gonna be data center because we at least hope that's gonna live for a little bit longer right for Forever. server i can't promise uh, I, I think if there's going to be a data center version, that should mean there should also be a, a server version. But depending on when we do that, there might not be a way to add new server apps to the marketplace anymore, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's another question, another question on my mind as well. Do you, uh, do you consider some archiving options? So other my, otherwise this might grow fast. So. Uh, and, and and combined with that, uh, Confluence now offers archiving pages, at least in the mm -hmm. cloud. So where do your attachments go when you archive the page? Yeah, we haven't looked into that yet. That That's a pretty cool idea as well. If that works, if you can't just move attachments to an archived page, um, you, we, you could probably set up like a specific recordings archive. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look yeah. into that. I don't have the question, uh, the answer right now, but... Because I, I haven't really fully understood that for images until now, because mm -hmm. some images you find in the insert menu, others you don't. And uh, if you archive the page, hmm, sometimes strange stuff happens. But archiving is a, is a big thing because it's... Yeah. No. I'm not sure. My, my expectation right now is that it would still contribute to the to the search quota, but I, I'm, I, ex yeah. I really don't know. And then, then it, of course, the question... Um, uh, do you, have you looked into how video behaves if you attach a second version of the same video? Yeah, it makes a new version. Um, okay. That's that's also something that we were considering uh, for, for the editor, right? Because we could give you the option to keep the old version if you want to revert at some point, yeah. or you could choose to override it because you probably don't want to waste the space with the old version, right? Yeah. Um, um, or, you, or you use your confluence with... Um, with some K15T app. So basically to version your documentation, for example, you know? uh, and you basically version your whole space. I forgot the name of the K15T app that does that, sorry. Is it just scroll versions? <laughs> yeah, it's... something scroll yeah. versions, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, but scroll versions, um, if you have something like that in place, that would be, uh, that uh -huh. is uh, another question. No. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I, I wrote all of that down. Also, the recording terminal output. That's really yeah. that's a cool idea. <laughs> because you mentioned you mentioned that uh, it, it's. I mean, uh, it just as you as you as we wait as we were waiting for Monday to come around, there was a actually a, a, a paper in the Gesellschaft für Informatik newsletter about vision videos. So the important the importance of vision videos in requirements engineering. So basically that you describe your vision, not as a text, but as a video. Uh -huh. So uh, this is our project and we are going to rule the world and it will make better mouse traps at the end. And you <laughs> see a mouse and a trap and the mouse is trapped and all that stuff. So, and that, that is easier than writing a mantra and whatnot. So that, that yeah. seems to be a thing because for example, some European uh, Union research projects require a vision video. And I have heard of okay. more than I've heard of uh, I've heard of more than one, um, let's say, public program for something that require visions and everything in videos. So at least some video outline, like Kickstarter. That's so there's cool. there's basically a market for your video in Confluence thing. <laughs> so that is. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> up until now, we've we've mostly been using it internally to like show how to do certain stuff in AWS. Yeah, okay. <laughs> like quick tutorials. So we haven't used yeah. the video option so much, but um, but yeah, if that's if that's something, that sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, but but documentation is, is uh, a minor a major point. Requirements engineering is a major point. Mm -hmm. Um, you could also include it into your Scrum thing so that you put the demos in a video, if not everybody is watching or is able to watch. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, stuff like that. It's also really yeah. easy to do demos. Yeah. Yeah. So um, no, that that's a really nice nice addition, and I'm I'm a bit concerned about the volume of data, but that's the only thing. So the. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I totally see that. Um, yeah, we're going to look into that. But for now, the attachments, they seemed like the most simplest solution because that also wouldn't require you to have to set up something like Vimeo or so on. That's that's yeah, then again course. another service and so on. So we really we really got to look into what options we want to provide there. But for sure, we we know about the issue. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's uh, what 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 quality are you currently recording? Highest quality that your camera will deliver or what what's it? So yeah it's it's currently just uh going full <laughs> best <Okay>. quality <laughs> so if i have a 4k camera then uh 15 minutes is a lot of stuff so yeah yeah depending on how much in the screen changes right because it's also still doing okay. the codec thing but yeah T yeah okay. that would be a big video yeah so and and um the one question that remains from my side is, is uh, the loading behavior of the conference page. It doesn't load the whole video. Yes, it just loads. Uh, so, so how does that work? So normally, if I, if you see our archive that we have for our ACE here, that takes a while because it loads all those pretty pictures that I like so much. Um, <laughs> uh, but if I have two videos in the page, does it load the whole video or does it just load the preview for for the player or what? what, what what's uh, how does that be? I'm not 100% sure on the details here. Okay. My instinct tells me it might just be loading the first frame to display the thumbnail. Okay. Um, I think that's what it's doing, yeah. yeah. I'm, I don't think it's downloading the whole video on the first page load. Yeah, okay. and if it did that, we definitely wouldn't want that. <laughs> yeah, no, but because that would be an issue depending on your bandwidth and stuff like that. Yeah, so, but, but um, as I said, we probably also want to customize thumbnails somehow, so... Uh, it might not even have to load the first frame anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's the question. Does your app support live video recording? Yes, it does. I I think so. Yes, and yeah. what, unless you mean something else by live video recording, which we don't understand. You you can just insert a macro, start your camera, and start talking. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's the whole idea. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or do you mean while you stream it somewhere else? So I open my camera, stream it to YouTube and want to have a recording on my conference page as well. Is that what you mean? <laughs> Waiting for the chat. Waiting for the chat. Uh, I mean, when collecting the requirements, is there an option to record and, and upload in conference? To live record and upload in conference? Yes. You, you mean to live stream? Or I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Oh, live, so you... re live record, live recording is possible. That's that's yeah. the only thing it does basically. Yeah, yeah you can record yourself uh, uh, talking about the requirements. Yeah, and then after after that, upload it in conference. Yeah. Oh, live. Yeah. You actually mean live streaming? Okay. Uh, so live streaming as you're doing it? Uh, no, you would have to use something like Zoom for that, right? But I mean. <laughs> if you want to talk to people live uh, while they're on the other side of the world, you you probably generally want to use something like like Zoom instead. This is about okay. recordings that you record once and then you can watch later. Okay, but it uh, yeah okay. So you you can only record explicitly for your conference page. You cannot talk to anybody else while you do yes. it. Yes, it's ah, not okay. Skype. <laughs> so that's the ah yeah okay. Um. And anyway, from Zoom or, or YouTube, you get a downloadable video file afterwards, and you can upload that if you want to. Um, any other questions? Is there still something in the Q&A box? No. Questions from the audience. You are all on the panel. You could use your audio and video <laughs> if you wanted to. Not recording to Confluence, just to Zoom. Just a lot of thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you as well, then, and uh, thanks for having me, Jörg.
yeah, thank you very much for coming back. Come back again. Uh, and if you, yeah, and if you have yeah, Hubert, yes, Hubert, Hubert is back, or at least his stadium is back. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, come back if you have more. So if that progresses, and I guess the first question from Hubert would be when you have a server version, you would like to have it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, exactly. So when you will release that one or data center. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah. I mean, it's good to hear that there's demand, right? That definitely shapes how we're prioritizing stuff. <laughs> oh. But I can't tell you it. <laughs> Yeah, and it, 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 I guess it's it's a more of a headache from your side because it makes the whole integration stuff more difficult, especially if you want to add services from Amazon like media services, mm -hmm. transcription services, and having that on server creates a whole new bundle of headaches um, for the integration and all that. Yeah, and I, I, I'm also not 100% sure what it's like on eBay, but in the cloud, the amount or the number of browsers supported by the Atlas in cloud is pretty minor. I think there's a lot of data center and server versions that still have people using only Internet Explorer and stuff like that. So yeah. once we enter that uh, boat, <laughs> we not we might not get out of it so quickly anymore. <laughs> but your app is now browser browser cross browser compatible, or what it's called? Yeah, it, at the moment it support it. The only thing it doesn't support is Safari. Everything else should basically work because. Everything other than that uh, seems to be Chrome-based right now. So Opera works because it's Chrome-based. Microsoft Edge is also Chrome-based now. So it all just works. Firefox. <laughs> yeah, and, and Internet Explorer is actually no longer supported as far as I know. As exactly. the old one. So, um... so unless you're using your own self-coded uh, self browser, it should all be fine. <laughs> OK. Other questions from the audience? Last call going once going twice, going three times. Thank you, Sven. Um, have a nice week, month in Bavaria. Stay <laughs> healthy. Um, don't fall off a mountain. Till we see you <laughs> next time. You too. Okay. okay. So bye-bye. Have a nice evening. <laughs>